Newton's method is an iterative algorithm for finding the points where a function equals zero, or in other words, we say finding the zeros of a function. And Newton's method, when applied to optimization, gives a procedure for finding the minima or maxima of a function. And Newton's method, well, it was originally formulated, of course, by Newton. Well, maybe not originally. He gets the credit for it, but there were maybe some, some, some other people who sort of figured it out before he did. But Newton's method is a second order method, which means that it uses not only the first derivative, not only the gradient, but also the second derivative. So that would be the Hessian in the multivariable case. And this is opposed to, say, for example, gradient descent, which is the classic sort of first order method in which you your, your new point, your xt plus 1 point, is xt minus some step size times the gradient of your function evaluated at xt. So this is a, this is a first order, first order type of method, gradient descent. And there's other first order methods also. But here, the only thing that's being used is the gradient and when we apply Newton's method to optimization, we'll be using the second derivatives also. So it's a second order method. So in this video, we're going to see the intuition behind this application of Newton's method, Newton's method applied to optimization, and we'll derive the multivariable form of this application of Newton's method. So first, let's start out with a little bit of, a little bit of intuition. Now you may know, you may be familiar with Newton's method in the, especially you may be familiar with it in the 1D case. So Newton's method, you know, not applying it to optimization or anything for finding zeros. So zero finding is your xt plus one. So we'll think here, this, so this all, first at first we'll just think about 1D, 1D case. So XT, you know, these are real numbers. And XT plus one, your, your new point, you start out with some, some point, X zero, and then you, you iterate with this formula. XT plus one equals XT minus F of X T divided by the derivative of F at XT. And so this, what this is doing, if you, you may remember this sort of thing. What this is doing is you have some, your function f, you know, maybe it's something like that. And you're, well, actually it should be, it should be going through zero, I guess. Something like that. And you're trying to get to, to a zero of this function. You're f trying to find a point where this crosses the, ac the axis here. And if you start out at, at this, if this is your, your initial point, then what this does, what's the, what this is doing is it's making a linear approximation to the function at that point. If I can draw a straight line, something like this. Making a linear approximation and then you jump. So you make a linear approximation and then you find where that approximation is zero. And then that's your new point. So this would be your, your, x, your xt and this would be your xt plus one. And by analogy, with this procedure, for finding minima or maxima, so minimizing or maximizing, maybe I should put min or max. Well, what is a, a min or max? The usual way, the usual thing you, you try to do is you try to set the derivative equal to zero, right? You try to set the, the, the well, the gradient in higher dimensions, but in the one dimensional, you try to set the derivative equal to zero and solve for the critical points. But if you can't do that analytically, then you can use Newton's method. And so Newton's method for optimization, this is for optimization, so that was zero finding. And for optimization, you're trying to find where the derivative is zero. Here, we were trying to find where the function itself was zero. 
and now we're trying to find where the derivative is 0. So it's just exactly the same, but instead of using f, you use the derivative. So it's just a perfect analogy with the root finding, the zero finding algorithm. And the picture for this one, for for the optimization case, is the following. So let's draw let's draw a bigger picture now, so we can sort of see what's going on here. So the picture now for this case, is that we've got some function, and maybe it's coming along, let's make it a color, maybe it's coming along here, and then it straightens out for a while, and maybe it goes up, something like that. So this is our, this is our function, and we want to find the minimum, so the minimum is going to be like down here somewhere. And what this does, is let's say that we start out at, let's say we start out here, somewhere, say this is our xt. What this procedure does is it, it is not only does a first order pro approximation, this was a first order approximation, it actually does a second order approximation. So you approximate this, this function using a quadratic. That's supposed to be a quadratic. It's supposed to be symmetric. It's supposed to be sort of like x squared, but shifted. And then you minimize that. You minimize that. So if, if I had drawn it appropriately, the minimum would be right about there. And you take xt plus 1 to be the minimum of this second order approximation. So that's the analogy. So this is the this is the, the 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 analogy with the zero finding. It's actually sort of a direct analogy. The analogy with the zero finding, the original sort of application of Newton's method, extending it to the optimization case. And this is the picture to sort of keep in mind. Now, one thing you may notice here is that, well, if it's the same procedure for minimizing and maximizing, how do we know we're not going to a maximum? And of course, that you know that that is a weakness of this. But you can recognize whether you know what what's going on, sort of, by looking at the at the second derivative and so on. If it's you know if it's if it's uh, you know telling you that the function is convex, then you're in, in good shape. If it's telling you the function is concave, then you're you're going the wrong direction. And um, and of course, you can see whether you're increasing or or decreasing the function to help sort of guide you along the way. And you can shift to like a one thing people do is shift from Newton's method to gradient descent. If you know if you're going the wrong direction, you can always do gradient descent and just sort of go in the right direction. If you're in it, so that would be like if you're in a situation like this where your approximation is is going the wrong way. This would be the approximation. But you can always do gradient descent. Okay, so now let's now that we sort of have the picture in our heads. Um, actually, let me draw you one more. Let me draw you one more uh, for the two D, at least to sort of see what's going on in the a little bit higher dimensions. Let's draw one more picture with the with two dimensions rather than just one to sort of see what's going on, maybe a little bit more generally. So maybe our function looks. Something like this. I'm just going to draw the level sets of our function here. Maybe something like this. So, and let's say that this is a minimum. So this is in two dimensions. And let's say the minimum is, is, about, is right here. Say it has a minimum and that it's there. And say we start out over here. So our, our initial point is like, like this guy. Let's make it blue. Well, what we do, or maybe, yeah, that's good. What Newton's method tells us to do is make a second order approximation. And a second order approximation here is going to be 
you know, it's going to be a quadratic looking thing. It's not necessarily going to be sp spherical like I've sort of drawn it, but but maybe, maybe something like that. And then you minimize that guy. So then you, you jump to the minimum of that. And that's opposed to the gradient descent, which would just be sort of going in the direction, you know, it would be going in the right direction, but but you might not get there as quickly. So that's one, one major advantage of Newton's method is that, uh, or second order methods in general over first order methods is that they can be much faster. Second order can be much faster than first order. Okay, so let's derive this algorithm. Let's derive Newton's method for the multi-dimensional case. Actually, let me, I'm going to run out of time probably in this video. So let, let me go ahead and stop there since that's a nice sort of stopping place. And we'll, we'll dive into the derivation uh, of, of it in the next video.